Okay. It's time for talking Muskegee. And it's currently 32 degrees along the lakeshore. Going up to a high of 46 with rain in the forecast after 5 p.m. this afternoon. Winds are coming out of the west-northwest at 5 to 8 miles an hour. Overnight tonight, rain showers on and off, 40 to low 41 degrees. Winds out of the east. Winds going to be picking up uh, into tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast is really ugly, uh, really breezy with the south wind coming uh, at about 24 to 29 miles an hour, gusting to 49 miles an hour so we're gonna have some uh, major wind damage and I I tell you what uh, we're gonna we're gonna dispense with all the other stuff that's going on in the Muskegon community because this is a very special broadcast Nor normally if you tune in on Tuesdays DJ Helson our county prosecuting attorney joins me on Tuesdays uh, DJ is also the uh, board chairman of the United Way and campaign chairman and they have their cabinet meeting on this on the fourth Tuesday of the month and so DJ is not so we figured that um, you know when working on this little project with the uh, Lakeshore Museum Center uh, and working on it's probably about a two to three year project of uh, building an exhibit at the uh, Lakeshore Museum Center called the history of radio in Muskegon and uh, the few of us got together and started talking about what we needed to do what we needed to get everybody that's been involved in radio back on the radio <laughs> and uh, and start talking about it. And we got in the studio, Oscar Oswell. Oscar's been helping uh, do this from the, the committee level and Oscar has been coordinating getting video shot of a lot of uh, great radio personnel. Yeah, morning, Oscar. yeah. got two, two of them right here uh, with two, us. But, two of the, yeah. the legends of radio in Muskegon. And Where? <laughs> <laughs> well, and we got Jim Cox yeah. uh, to, to my far left and right right across the console from me, uh, the legendary Cliff Martin. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and Cliff, you, you, you guys are all talking about when you turn 70. <laughs> you kids, I'm almost 90. Come on, well, give wait, me a You break. just turned 90. You just turned 90. <laughs> well, it's nice to be here. Before we really get going, I have to pay tribute to a friend of mine who passed away about a week and a half ago. Okay. Tony Rivera. Tony Rivera. And 58 years old, had heart problems, oh, you know. And uh, we had a celebration of life this past Sunday mm -hmm. at the at the Lakeside Eagles. And I want to tell you, it was wall to wall people. Yeah. He had just tons and tons of friends. Tony Rivera. And I know a lot of people are listening to this yeah, show this right, morning. Tony, yeah, yeah. I informed them that I would be on and had to pay tribute to, oh, to our dear friend Tony. But just wall-to-wall -wall friends. Yeah, Thank you. Well, and, and, and but Cliff uh, said earlier before we were on the, the air, Cliff said you live long enough and you become a legend. Or you're, you're a legend in your own time. <laughs> yep. Yep. I hope so. <laughs> He's very active on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, geez, several times a day he's posting just fun stuff. I get a little political on mine. Okay. You know, so well, what? Yeah, so it's what? Trump yeah. in 2020. We all know that. Well, it's very true. <laughs> I'm on Facebook all day, every day, writing silly light stuff. And I, I purposely write stupid, silly, fun stuff to see how many will take it serious yeah. and get all bent out of shape, and I, they do. I know now what you've done. I'm glad you explained it. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, but what, one of the interesting things that Oscar's been doing and, uh, is uh, going around and uh, sitting down with, uh, with uh, legendary people in yeah. radio and Muskegon and doing a video. And that's yeah. part of what, of what our project is going to be, is archiving the history of, of, of radio. We don't know exactly what we're going to do with all of it, Oscar, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, right. but you know, but it, it's one of these kind of things, AC's got a tape rolling right now, or tape, it's not to, to do it. Yeah. We're going back to that. that <laughs> I know, it's, it's hard to not, not say tape. Not, not you know, tape, but it's all digital. It's all digital. And those yeah, it's kind all of things. digital but but um, they, they, these are the kind of things that we're, we're archiving and uh, saying it's available to go back through and maybe call up while you're at the exhibit. And wow. saying if you want it to, to go in there at some point in time, a hundred years from now, and say Jim Cox, and there all of a sudden there's Jim Cox on there and yeah. talking in this radio studio right now. And now, so we, we thought we needed to preserve that. For, where is this exhibit going to be? Is well, it? it's either going to be at the Heritage Museum on Western Avenue, really, that's part of the Lakeshore Museum Center now, or they're actually going to be doing an addition to the building on Clay Street. Oh wow, uh, Clay, that's and, great. Clay and Fourth Street right there. And uh, so they haven't quite decided where that exhibit's going to be. But it's a it's a it's about a three year process for us to gather the information. We're actually looking, Jim, right now for if you know anybody that's got any old radio studio equipment, because what we'd like to do is is build a studio, 
and build a studio with as much stuff as we can get from as far back as we can get it and build a studio and saying this is what it used to look like. Are you having any luck on this? Well, we've got a few people that have some stuff they don't want to give up yet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I bet. But we're saying permanent loan. You know, permanent loan I to the museum. I have a couple of yeah. items I'll donate. You know, and, and so, so we can, at Randy Crow, has, uh, they've got uh, given us some space in one of his warehouses to start collecting stuff. Wow. And so we're, we're doing that and along with Tim Akerhoff. And, yeah, John, would they be interested in my box of cassette recordings that I used on my jukebox Saturday night show, oh, and I have Saturday. it, don't I? <laughs> no, you just have the book listing the the artists on them, but you don't have the tapes. You never, I still have them. Oh, okay. yeah, you know, I mean, more. Cliff, those are the kind of things that I mean a lot of us do. I mean, I've got a whole uh, sure. boxes of programs of sure. when, I, when Oscar and I were doing a radio program called Talking Tunes. Sure, and uh, we did that for what did we do that Oscar for about with you probably about four years or five yeah. years, and then it went on beyond that for a number years after that, I've got all of those cassette tapes. Wow. And then when we first started out here at the at Clear Channel, yep. uh, at that point then we were using mini discs uh, to record on and I've got a whole series of those things too. We're we're gonna we're gonna we want to collect those as well. When people are willing to give them up, they're saying we're gonna have them labeled and, and at least archived at the Detroit Museum Center. Yes. And so to be able to do that to preserve it, and hopefully at some point in time we'll be able to digitize those. Yeah. And well, I, say, I can transfer all that stuff and digitize it, and put it in MP3 or whatever format. Yeah. Me. So, so we've got it. We got it preserved on, on uh, in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the the connection between the Heritage Museum and Lakeshore. Right. That their merge is fairly recent. Right. Um, yes. The Heritage has a new director. A woman whose name I can't recall, and I have some special interest in that museum. My daughter's father-in-law started the print shop exhibit in the Heritage Museum. Oh, really? Don really? Lynn, and I believe his name is still there on that old print shop. In the early days, they actually produced the newsletter of the Heritage Museum on the antique printing press there. Oh, very, very and good. my son-in-law Dan Lynn is also very active as was his father and for a long time was on the board of the Heritage. They've got an elevator opening up the third floor and I, I am oh, yeah. so wow. happy that they're merged with Lakeshore. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Dake, who uh, was one of the, uh, the the prime movers in that, decided yes. that uh, it was time for him to retire yes. again. Yes. He had retired for, as a school teacher in Whitehall. Uh, for many, many years. His father worked at the telephone company, so yep. I had a little connection there going going way back. And he's saying, you know, it's time that uh, we, we merge all the, those museums together mm -hmm. because it's it's that's uh, all part of Muskegon's history yes. uh, that's in there. And that, that Heritage Museum is a fantastic gym. I don't know if you've been in the Heritage Museum. It's been years. It's, yeah, they, um, it's, it's time for an update. Oh, you know, They've I mean, got a complete <coughs> Brunswick bowling alley in there. Oh, is sure. that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, with one, one, of the, one, one of the original automatic pin set. With yeah. the I've, uh, I've, automatic pin I've set. donated some items to that museum. You know, and, and, I, did, and I did too. When I, when I retired from the phone company, I was in charge of the old museum that we had on Ellis Road, but we had moved all of that out of there when oh, we sold wow. the building to uh, uh, Quality sure. Farm and Fleet. Sure. And so we had that all in storage on uh, Terra Street. Got and a steam figured, engine from one of the uh, factories. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. operated now on compressed air. Yeah. It actually runs. The uh, If you go into the Heritage Museum, yes. go into the about halfway up between the first and second floor, there, yes. there is a, a telephone yes. exhibit right there. The cord board that's in there, the switchboard that's in there, came out of the Accidental Hotel. Wow. That was in the Occidental Hotel from the 1920s yeah. uh, through about the 1950s when well, it was finally taken I've been out. watching some interesting documentaries on YouTube about Charles Hackley ah, there you and go. the ah. Hackley Gold Days, Ooh. you know, uh -huh. and we all yeah. know where the Hackley home is, the house, yeah. and there's actually a tunnel under that oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that goes mm -hmm. to the house, you know, oh. a, a house just side by side. And uh, they opened up the tunnel one time, but it, you know they could tell the tunnel was there because the bricks were different. Sure. Right? Oh, yeah. So they yeah. took a few bricks out and took a look with a camera inside. And that's as far as they went. Yeah. But that's an interesting fact. I think there's a bunch of tunnels underneath this stuff. Well, oh, yeah. I've been in a few of them. But yeah, you real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna take our first break of the day, guys, and uh, get some commercial messages in, and we'll be right back.
talk of Muskegon, and we've got uh, in the studio with us Oscar Azo behind the camera. He's shooting uh, right now. And we'll be able to see this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, YouTube, and uh, I'm not sure. Is that where you're going to post it first, Oscar? Great. Uh, we had uh, Jim Cox, that was the voice you just heard. Uh, oh, yeah. Legendary Jim Cox. And, yeah. uh, uh, and then Cliff Martin, uh, the, the the legend of Muskegon. Another and, legend. Another that legend. Uh, what was the name of that program you did for many, many years, Cliff? The, all the cassette tapes you've got? Oh, oh Jukebox Saturday Night. Jukebox I did it Saturday. on WKBZ first and then later on WQW. What, what, year did you, about, what year did you start that on KBZ? Mm. 70s, you know. In the 70s? Yes, yeah. yes. Jukebox Saturday night. Yes. Wait, now, wait a second. Jukebox, though. There's, you can have a lot of things in Jukebox. What what were you playing back oh, in the uh, early 70s? 40s. 40s? 40. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, no Inagata de Vida? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, well, I got into radio before rock and roll was born, and I managed to stay alive without doing rock, <laughs> because I couldn't do it. I didn't have the delivery for it. <laughs> and then he also had the Breakfast Club. Oh, at yeah. Russ's restaurant, a lot of people oh, went there. You know, great yeah. local radio. Yeah, yes. oh yeah, that yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it, it, but, God, you did that at Russ's for many years. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was fun time. I mean, you, you I mean, pretty much. I mean, you pretty. I'm flipping the, the kind of guests you had on there were pretty pretty much everybody and everything that That's happened right. in yeah. this gig. And after a while, I kind of joined that. Uh, I took it over. Okay, and I was right. there maybe for a year at Russ's restaurant. Uh, doing a lot of interviews, you know, the mayor of Muskegon and that oh, thing, yeah. you know, just a, a, well, and it's kind of what this program does. Right, I mean, exactly, much perfect. I've always said, you know, it's everything from West Michigan Symphony uh, to midget wrestling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great for him. And everything Great in between. <laughs> he's, he's got pictures, too, of, uh, I, I know there's one picture of you yes. that he interviewed you one time, and he's also got one at really? the Breakfast Club, uh, Bill Eddings. Did yes. I have a beard, or what? Well, probably yeah, a different you did. Color. Yeah, yeah. A different color. yeah. Bill Eddings was a difficult man to interview. I always had the impression that he was playing games with me. He would, I would ask him something, and he would say yes or no, and leave it at that. Now he's retired. Is he? Is he still with us? Well, you know, when 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 Oscar and I first started doing a program on, a, on another radio station. Um, we, when we were doing a Saturday morning program, oh, Bill yeah. Eddings was part of that. that oh, group. that's right. Cause, because he was uh, because arts and entertainment director yeah. at the Chronicle, and I'd known Bill for yeah. a long time through Civic yeah. Theater and a few other that things. That was uh, WEFG, yeah. all seventies, all the time. Yeah, Remember yeah. That? And, and so we we started doing that. So I brought Bill Eddings on to do that, but it was like a three-hour program, and and Eddings would give the report on the arts yep. and cultural events happening in Muskegon, but we also had the Bowling Buddies. <laughs> yeah. and, and the Bowling Buddies would come on. What was the name of that guy that, from the Bowling Buddies? I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, remember. he'd come on every week and give pretty much the same people were bowling very well in Muskegon. <laughs> you know, every week. I mean, pretty much the same names that bowled, you yeah. know, 300 game and it's, their it's, tops of their leagues. And, it's the and local they, input but, that's but the, important. But the local yes. bowling yeah. people loved it. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, the segment was brought to you by the, the Muskegon Bowling Association. And uh, they were on there for probably half an hour talking about bowling every Saturday morning. And, and Iddings got really pissed yeah, that we were talking about bowling. <laughs> And, and I, I said to Eddings one time when he when he finally, when he left that program, I said, Bill, I said there are more people that go into Northway Bowling Alley on one night than there are during the season of West Michigan Symphony. Yeah, West, West Shore Symphony. Uh, he was also then. into and the and he, and he, and he, went, <laughs> <laughs> he was also into the theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I still, so well, Bill Bill still comes in here occasionally and, oh, he and talks about uh, some things that are going on. He's been real active with Civic Theater and uh, still on the board of directors of Civic Theater and and so so I, I still like him. But I still remind Bill that. You know, there's still a lot more people that go into bowling alleys in this town than go into the Frohenthal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, Bob, I, I think Bob put them in his place, too, because Bob says they're paying more money than any of the sponsors on your show right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're keeping the bowling buddies. <laughs> No, that, that was very, uh, very true. Uh, but, but Jim, you uh, you worked for a lot of different stations over the years. Oh, I sure did. I started in 1966 when I was 16 years you old. You were still going to Motor Shores High School. Yes, <laughs> I was a radio star, you know, and I was in high school. It was great. That was just part time on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to WMUS even before it was country. Right. It was a hole in the wall radio station. 
you know, you pay them 35 bucks, you, they'll put anybody on the air, you know, for a half hour. And I was on that station the first day they went country, and it zoomed like a rocket. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It was incredible. And uh, I, I watched the whole thing happen. And, you know, a country music audience is the most genuine audience you can ever find. Oh, They're always loyal. there oh, for you. You do a remote and they would, they would, you know, knock the door down to get in. Well, we, I mean, we obviously experienced that with uh, Mark Dixon uh, still on uh, WMUS and, and every year when we do Moose Fest. Oh my! You know, yeah. and Moose Fest is really supported by local advertisers. Sure. And the tickets are free, but you got to go to the local advertiser to get the tickets. Sure. Get in the door. The ticket parties. Sure. And these ticket parties, they, they draw hundreds of people. Sure. You know, and, and so that 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 audience is loyal, and it's uh, it's dedicated, and they're great fans. I mean, they're great fans, and and. My experience over the years with country music uh, did backstage hospitality for pretty much the entire run of summer celebration, and got to know, got to meet a lot of performers coming in and out of there. The best people were the country performers, and it's they, changed. Country music has changed a lot. Sure, it has. But yeah, it yeah. had to to well, appeal to the younger yeah. audience. Oh yeah, it just yeah, had absolutely. to. Yeah. You couldn't stick with beer drinking music forever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> At Cliff, when I mean, in your days at, at uh, WKBZ back then, I mean, uh, did you have a lot of people coming, artists coming into Muskegon and performing? Not really. Um, yeah, I remember uh, uh, the, the Captain and Tennille okay. came uh, into uh, the Walker go. Arena, ah. and I think I introduced them, and a couple other singers. I I got on the stage at the Frauenthal and introduced the, the big name singers, but not a lot. Yeah. More of that happened when I was in Flint, <coughs> where, by the way, I was also Cousin Cliff on your Hillbilly Hit show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'm talking about Eddie Arnold and Lefty Frizzell and Kitty Wells and the real country artists. Sure. Oh, that, that was remember, real country. I remember the first time I walked into WKBZ. I think it was 1972. I'd bounce around from, you know, WTRU to MUS and then to KBZ. And it was it was like going into a time capsule. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Beautiful studios. They were old, uh -huh. but they were always nice and clean. It was across the street from uh, the golf course. Okay, well, from Oak Ridge. Yeah. Yes. And uh, no air conditioning. They had yeah. screen windows, but you didn't need it. They had nice trees over the building, oh, yeah. but it was a time capsule. And I was on the morning show playing, you know, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, and. Uh, M O R they call it. Yeah, middle, middle of the road. Of the road yeah. Yeah. Hey, t tell them about starting how you started the the uh, diesel engine over at KBC. Oh yeah, that we they, all did. <laughs> they had a World War II out of a submarine diesel engine in the garage, hooked to a big generator. You know, George Kravitsky. Kravitsky, <laughs> the <laughs> engineer that had been there from 1948, 49. You know, he kept everything going. And uh, every once in a while, the power would go off, so you'd go out in the garage and fire that monster up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had to know just exactly how to start it, otherwise it wouldn't start. You know? But old George, he taught me how to start it. And I think it was in 1976, uh, we had a very bad ice storm. Okay. You know, we right. got yep. to the studio and everything was dark. Go in there and fire it up. Perfect. Ran beautifully. And it's been sold. It was sold maybe, what, 10 years ago yeah, yeah. on eBay for like 1500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And they rolled it out on big pipes and put it on a truck. And somebody's got it. Probably still works. Sure. It, it took the, it took the yeah, whole I garage. Recall. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just saying it, had, it took the whole garage. The whole garage was full. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. What, 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 it was a submarine engine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Too. That's, that's stunning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was huge. You know, diesel engines will last forever. Oh, yeah. Because uh, yeah. they're full of oil. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, it worked very well. well tell them, before we go to the news uh, break at the bottom of the hour, here, and when we come back, we're going to have Ron Timmer on the line from, uh, from yeah. Celebration Cinemas and giving you a little bit of a movie report because of the holiday. He's normally on here on Wednesdays. We're going to do uh, a segment uh, on Tuesdays to, to get him in. But uh, what I 
first started out here at the uh, now iHeart Studios, but back then it was his Clear Channel. Um, we, we had uh, 98.3. Oscar and I were in a studio where literally had to hold the wires together to get on the air. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean and we had this we had this broadcast board. Uh, well, the remote board had a had a, had a circular dial on it uh, to dial up the studio uh, on the thing, and it, and then uh, they changed formats and said uh, pretty much they didn't tell us that our program was canceled, but it was canceled. And at the same time, we'd been talking to Mark Dixon, and Mark Dixon said. Well, we're opening up the studio, and at the, it's a little closet studio for our AM. Um, it was back at WMUS AM at the time, 1090. And we want to do a talk program, and, and uh, which we'd like to have you guys come out here. And when I first came out here and sat in that studio, I said, you know, it's, being like, it's like being fired by the, by, the white so or by the white caps and hired by the Yankees. It was that different. We had wow. microphones that worked. <laughs> we, we didn't. We couldn't see any open wire, <laughs> you know, like we could in the other studio. Yeah, so this is it was ten, remarkable. I mean, it's, this it's is professional. This is 1090 AM WKBZ, but the original WKBZ was AM, AM 850. 850, you right. know. Yep. And uh, they captured the call letters to get the news image, oh, which was a good idea. Absolutely. Studio 85. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Studio 85. <laughs> uh, we're going to take our news break at the bottom of the hour, and we'll have Ron Van Timmer on when we return. We'll be right back. You can talk, you can you hear him on the monitor? Freedom at freedom GM. Uh, you can hear him put on headphones on, Ron, Ron Van Timmer's on, you can hear him on the headphones. Okay. There you go. Gentlemen, what's the uh, I remember you. <laughs> I was, uh, at the time I had you on, it was uh, uh, Oldies 98, 98.3 you were on. Yeah, with me. <laughs> I know, you know, I quit smoking years ago and that's what saved it. It saved my life, I think. I know. Well, like Nat King Cole, he attributed his beautiful voice to the nicotine in his throat, the cigarettes. He really did. Of course, he died of what? Lung cancer? <laughs> he sure sounded good for years. Let's see how that worked out for him. Yeah, Arthur Godfrey sold a ton of Chesterfields and he died of lung cancer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're into vaping and that's that's yeah. no good. Just as bad. Hey, I know, I know. I see all these young girls and guys just puffing away. I thought, oh boy, here we go. So that's what keeps us medical field rich. Well, what I've been doing, I have uh, 15 radio stations across the United States that I do voice work for. I do commercials. They fax me the copy, I record it, and have them listen to it. If they don't like it, I redo it until they like it. And I, I charge uh, 35 Five bucks a cut. And I got stations like in the in Florida, Panhandle of Florida, uh, a couple of them in Texas, uh, New York State. So it's it's okay. I'm not getting rich, but it pays the bills. Did you No, no. I just have a nice little studio at the house, and I put it in a in a wave form, you know, and and email it to them or you know. Send it to them on a thumb drive, whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> gosh, with the technology today, it's incredible what you can do, and it's growing all the time. I can't keep up with it. And uh, it's a day early, but we've got Ron Van Timmeren on the line from Celebration Cinemas. Morning, Ron. Yeah, and we got uh, some uh, some of the legendary radio guys in the uh, studio with us too. Uh, Cliff Martin uh, was on WKBZ and WQWQ for many many years in the Muskegon area, and Jim Cox, who was on pretty much every radio station in Muskegon. Yeah. And I remember, I remember on, I remember on WMUS, we used to give away free movie passes, and they were hot. Everybody oh, yeah. loved oh, them. Absolutely, and and and, uh, and Oscar Osbo too. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there you go. And Oscar Oswald is in the studio with us as well. I know you've talked. I do it, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar's actually operating the video equipment and shooting this, and it'll be on YouTube. <laughs> well, I want to talk about Oscar. I am not only 20 years older than everybody else here, but also <laughs> not a Muskegon native. 
In fact, Oscar and I are from the same area of eastern Michigan, Macomb County. He's right, from yeah, Mount right. Clemens, which is the Macomb County seat. Yeah. I was brung up in the village of Warren, which is a one square mile village. Yeah. And the yeah. first time I was on the radio was when I was high school, I was a pianist for a choir and we were on a new FM station, WMLN, which stood for Monitor Leader News, the Mount Clemens newspaper. Really? Remember that, Oscar? Oh, yeah. Well, no, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Cliff. <laughs> well, well, hey, remember, <laughs> I don't but, remember but, that. But obviously, no. Ron, you've been on with all of these guys over the years. Yep, I mean, yep. because um, back to the days of Lokes Theaters and now uh, Celebration sure. Cinemas, and, and uh, I, I just happened to take my granddaughter to a movie on Sunday, and uh, and uh, we went to see Frozen 2, Ron. Uh, <laughs> and, but I, I was commenting to her, and she's 12 years old, and I was commenting to her, when I was growing up, this was the auto drive-in theater. <laughs> and I said, when, and when this theater first opened up, I, we parked down by the original two theaters uh, that were built out there. And I said, see that entrance right there? And I said, that was the original two theaters before uh -huh. they added on all these other theaters. And she was pretty fascinated by the history of uh, Lokes Theaters. And obviously, yeah, your your, tra your, your uh, history of radio, the, the 75th anniversary of yeah. Celebration Cinemas and Lokes Theaters in Muskegon area. Um, I proposed to my wife, who was a fan of my radio show in Flint, in the Dork Drive-In Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and we... I lost her in 2013, just short of our 60th anniversary. Whoa. I dated all my fans when I was at WMRP. You never dated me. Gigs. I was your fan. You never dated me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe that kind of dating. Yeah, you can right. now. It's all right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, I mean, but we're talking around. We're talking about obviously we're working on the history of radio in the Muskegon area, and it's a like a three-year project of yes. of gaining uh, of listening to. To these guys talk about their history of radio in Muskegon, but obviously the movies have been huge. I mean, you, you, uh, you, and and the Lokes uh, Company and now Celebration Cinemas have been a huge part of radio in Muskegon. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of these guys worked at WMUS, uh, and that was right out the uh, back door to W uh, WMUS's studio. Oh yeah, North Drive-In Theater. And then, <laughs> then I was at WDRU, and they, you know, oh, right there by Getty. Sure, and that <laughs> huge uh, FM. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that whole alignment of uh, yeah. of uh, the towers that were right there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. for, for many, many years. You know, I owe, I owe Ron some money still from Getty Driving because I've <laughs> snuck in so many people oh. from Getty Driving. Never paid for He them. talks about that in his history. Of, yeah. Of the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see too many movies. The windows were all steamed up all the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, 